Okay. Well, uh, this work I started at the beginning of the strike. Um, I went to Lee Hall Colliery to a picket line um, by chance with a lot of friends. Uh, in fact, it was with the minor support group from uh, Birmingham Minor Support Group, and we went to a lot of different picket lines. And when I went to the Lee Hall picket line, it um, there was just something that happened there that that made me want to go there again, and it made me um, feel that I wanted to do something more important with that particular um, group of people. In fact, the the picture that's on the front of the book um, shows uh, Huey, who is the black guy. Uh, with the V sign like that, and um, I mean the the interesting thing about that picture, of course, is that on one level, you know, he's saying um, victory, but he's also saying fuck you. So that's that's uh, the whole point. And Huey, who became a very good friend of mine, um, he was that type of person. He didn't care about um, uh, getting arrested or or doing anything um, that would antagonise the police, because there was always this. Um, relationship between the strikers and the police where the um, police were trying to hold down the, the strikers and the strikers were trying, trying to um, you know be empowered. Um, there was a very interesting little um, event that happened in the strike actually a little bit later on but I'll talk about it now and um, it was that there was a um, chief inspector uh, Nesbit, and there was a song that was written by the um, cultural um, theatre group um, Banner Theatre. Banner Theatre was uh, was a musical group. Um, um, Three Davids, I think they were, and um, they had one of their famous songs, which was about Chief Inspector Nesbit, and it went something like. Chief Inspector Nesbit, Chief Inspector Nesbit, Chief Inspector Nesbit, de 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 Now, I'll tell you what the de 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 is once I've told you the story, because otherwise that defeats the punchline. It was winter time, there was heavy snow, um, there was the legal number of strikers on the picket line, and they had built a snowman. And Chief Inspector Nesbitt arrived with his Range Rover and he said to the strikers, well, um, this snowman constitutes a another person. You have to either get rid of the snowman or you have to get one man less on the picket. And the people refused to do that. And Chief Inspector Nesbitt, being that he was a bit of a bastard like a lot of the, the police were, um, he reversed his Range Rover and ran over the um, the snowman and the song went like this it was <laughs> and chief inspector Nesbitt ran over a concrete block and he totaled his car totally on this concrete block around which the snowman was built and wrecked his car so that was one of the sort of highlights in the strike and just one of those funny instances that happened. But anyway, um, Lee Hall, uh, it was a minority pit, and the, you know, that meant that there were something like 200 miners who were on strike, and there were something like 800 who were going to work. So Lee Hall was, was particular because of that, and there were a lot of minority pits in the Nottingham area and Staffordshire, and that made it very difficult. And, um, it also made Lee Hall very interesting because the solidarity that existed in amongst the strikers, and not just the strikers, but also the women, uh, the miners' wives, um, was exceptionally strong. And the, the miners' wives were, to an extent, held this strike together um, because when it came towards the end of the strike, the, um, when some of the men started to feel the crunch, uh, the lack of money, um, there were often women who were saying, you know, um, we're out on strike with you, you don't go back. And there was one woman who said to her husband quite um, famously, if you go back to work, I'll break your legs. 
So there was this type of support that existed, this type of relationship that existed within the communities, which made the, the solidarity of the strike um, so important. For me, I, I, I started working at um, Lee Hall, and um, I suppose I went every single week from whatever time that I um, started going to the, to, the, to the Lee Hall picket line. It wasn't at the very beginning, it was probably a month or two in. And um, probably I'd go up there a couple of times a week, sometimes I'd stay over, sometimes I'd stay in their houses, whatever. And I was, I was very much a permanent member of the um, strike, if you like, as an outsider. And there were a lot of people going in and out of Lee Hall, and a lot of people from Lee Hall who were involved in the Minor Support Committee in Birmingham, um, which was a whole mixture of trade council, political parties, individuals, and so forth. And there was, a, to begin with, the um, to begin with, a lot of the solidarity that took place with the miners sort of came out from outside. And I think what happened during the strike was that the miners and the miners' wives became more involved in everything that was supporting them, so that in fact it was them who were involved in the, um, in the support group. So it was actually, you know, you got rid of all the petty politics that, that happened to an extent that began with different political parties, different left-wing groups who, who were there, who wanted to um, push for their own ends. Um, classically, there were um, certain groups at the beginning of the strike who didn't want to be collecting food for the miners and things like that. They wanted to be out on the picket lines and fighting for the miners. But And there was a classic cartoon in one of the papers of um, of a striker on picket line throwing a kind of baked beans at a policeman, and you, it was like it was ridiculed that this this kind of baked beans would hit the policeman and that would stop the strike. But in fact, it was exactly that that was necessary, because eventually it became this war of attrition, and it became a very very long strike, a year long strike, and it was the support and it was the solidarity of the people um, with with the miners. Um, and there was huge solidarity with them, which enabled the miners to be on strike for so long. In, in terms of my own involvement, I mean, I, I you know, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's like it's like with most of the work that I do, um, I create a relationship, and suddenly that work takes over. The work that I did with Lee Hall Colliery, the um, I suppose the work took place over a three or four year period. Um, I, so it started, what, in 1984, and the book probably was produced in 87, the exhibition in 86. Um, so that the book wasn't just about the strike itself, it was about the year after the strike, it was about all the solidarity. And it was also about the way in which the, the miners and the miners' wives learnt. Um, and how they gave solidarity to, to other groups, so that it was actually about their development as people. And, it, and they were involved with me um, all the way through. I mean, I, I, became part of, I became part of that group of people who were on strike. So I, that, in a way, relates to how I'd learnt to work. And that I was probably because when I was at college, I was reading a lot. Um, and I used to like reading Brecht, and I used to like reading Walter Benjamin. I read this um, essay by Walter Benjamin, author as producer, and in that essay, Walter Benjamin talks about the relationship um, with the means of production, and he says, I think, that it's not what what is important is not the relationship that not the point of view that somebody has um, towards an activity, but what is his relationship within it. What is his relationship within the means of production? And to, to an extent, that, that is something that operated for me in terms of how I operate as a photographer or a filmmaker, is that I'm not just somebody who has a point of view. Um, I'm somebody who works within, and I become part of that. And then, to an extent, I express a collective um, point of view about what's going on. In the, in the end of the book, 
when we um, eventually put the book to bed, if you like, um, or we put the exhibition to bed first of all, we, we all got together and I, I brought some writers with me towards the end of the strike who were um, people from the same sort of political point of view and people who um, had worked with um, Banner and had worked with Charlie Parker and had worked with this sort of history of labour movement. They came from this history of, the, of, of working with the labour movement and working in media and working in a way where they gave a voice to the people who they were um, filming or working in radio or whatever it happened to be. So it wasn't just about you know, being somebody like the BBC or, or a, a media and coming in and photographing and going away. It was giving people a voice and trying to represent those people's voices. And, and so that's what we did. We, we got together, we, we did lots of interviews with people, we got everybody together for a weekend and, and for a whole weekend um, everybody talked about what had gone on during the strike and we had pictures on the wall, we put texts that we'd had from previous weekends. Eventually you've got this uh, exhibition, as it were, a pro forma exhibition, a, a rough exhibition, lots of pictures, and you, and you can see that in the end of the book there's a picture which shows um, all of us looking at these pictures and people pointing at various pictures, and that's what happened. And, and, and there were lots of disagreements about, um, there were lots of disagreements about um, you know which pictures should be in and which um, texts should be in and and so forth and we talked we talked about it and to an extent virtually everything that that I wanted to put in and the writers wanted to put in was put in um, there were things added there were certain little things taken away um, and you know it it was a collective point of view that the problem was of course that there were some people who would be uh, who wouldn't like things that were said so what happened was that when we had all these images on the wall, there were certain men who didn't like to be t didn't like it to be said that they were chauvinist and macho, and the the women had said these things because it was the case, and you know we had arguments with the men to say, well, look, you know this is the point of view of the women, this is this is you know that it was difficult for them. And they agreed that this had happened, but they thought that it detracted from the um, strengths of the work by having this type of conversations in the book. And we argued with them that actually this was a strength of the work because the work was about the reality of what happened. It wasn't trying to gloss over everything. It wasn't trying to gloss over what had actually happened and, and what the difficulties were. So eventually all these things were left in. One of the, one of the nice things after the the work was produced was that the Lee Hall strikers and women took the, or I should say the Lee Hall miners and miners wives, they took the exhibition around and sometimes there were places where they would be able to put up the work. And there were other times where right-wing councils or right-wing municipalities didn't want to put up the work and I was told of one event where they went down in a coach to this place with the exhibition and because they were not allowed to put the exhibition up in the council house or wherever it happened to be, they stood outside in the, in the sort of plaza in front of the town hall and everybody held a panel of the exhibition. And that's how they stood there for the whole afternoon. So it's marvellous. They felt very proud of this exhibition which was theirs. And, you know, this is what it was about. They were communicating through the work that we produced together. Um, something which they wanted to show to the rest of the world. Um, I took all the pictures. I mean, it wasn't as though they'd taken the pictures, but they had participated in the strike, and, and the strike was about them. And Hanging On By Your Fingernails is a... is in a way, it's like a, a pamphlet about how to go on strike. It teaches people um, who've never been on strike what, what could be the problems you'd face and how do you get by. Um, and then each double page or each series of pages deals with a different thing. Uh, and that's how it came together. The way in which the project was financed, um, basically to begin with I financed everything myself. 
when it came to producing an exhibition, that was the time where I actually looked for financing. And I got um, finances twice from the um, West Midlands Arts, which is part of the Arts Council of Great Britain. And they funded the, the production of the, of the exhibition and they also helped towards the production of the book, uh, which was then published by Spokesman Press. Um, in terms of earning money, I didn't earn a great deal of money from it. I mean, there wasn't enough money available in the pot to really make it work. And a lot of the miners were having a hard time. Some of them had been victimized. Some of them had been sacked. Uh, what I agreed to do was to work for the minimum wage that a miner got, which was a very small amount. <laughs> And, I, and now when I look back on it, I think that was a, a, a terrific mark for solidarity because um, I wouldn't work for those sort of wages ever again. But, but at that time, it seemed the, the best way to do it. And I knew that the, the miners and the, the strike committee and everybody else was reaching in their pockets to help it. So I did that myself as well. You know, I mean, I worked all hours of the day to produce it, but I didn't mind. I mean, you know, and a lot of friends came to help me to produce a book, to do the design and everything like that. And um, you know, then you know, I was I was paid all the materials to produce the exhibition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and I did it all myself. Um, I mean, that was the time of um, typesetting and galley proofs, and um, no computers or anything like that. So everything was typeset. All the print, all the pictures were printed, the exact size that they should be. Uh, they were stuck down onto a piece of paper, and the typesetting was stuck down beneath. And I did all this, and I did every single page, and then we laminated it, and just hoped that um, one of them wasn't wrecked on the panels, and none of them were, so we were okay. So it was a solidarity. It was a solidarity action. It was a collective work. It was. Um, it, it was. We did it in the way that felt right, and 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 everybody was happy with it. Um, I remember hunting for ages and ages and ages for a picture which would give this overall feeling of Lee Hall and the village and the power station. The power station was this very important um, symbol um, of Lee Hall because Lee Hall Colliery was right next to the power station. And then there was Rugeley itself and there was this, this, this tree. And so that just was, I think for, for everybody, that was the image which presented in a way the, the death of that community because unfortunately what happened was that Lee Hall was closed down just like so many others of them. This one, if we look at this one here, this one here, the, the Lucky Strike, um, that, that, was, that was great. There was a, a lot of interesting people who supported the, the strike and, and she was a, I can't remember her name, um, but she was like, like a sort of punk hippie person who had this huge um, knotted um, stump, as one of the miners' women called it. She said, um, I remember one of them said, oh, I, w I, b I wish my husband had a stump like this. So there were these type of comments that came from the miners and there was this fantastic solidarity and also acceptance of other cultures. I mean, that was what was interesting because, you know, the miners, you know, were on the whole quite conservative working class people, uh, but very much changed in, in the experience of the strike. And the people who came to help them and were in solidarity with them were people who were completely different to the type of people that they would meet had they not been on strike. So this was one of the sort of marvellous things that happened during the strike, that it brought all these different types of people together. Yes, uh, this, this picture here. Very, uh, very important picture, probably one of, the, one of the best pictures I did during the strike. Who knows? I mean, there was this propaganda from the government all the time. Uh, lots of lies. Every single day there were figures put up, released by the coal board and the government, shown on the BBC, um, with the numbers of people who apparently had gone back to work or had gone back to work and um, so was this, there was this war really, this, this psychological war that was going on and this picture epitomizes that because you've got the, the striking um, miners family who 
are sort of living in, in difficult circumstances. Um, and um, the, the toys and the things that they've got and the coal that was given to them, all, all this comes from the solidarity that they received. So, so that picture is all about that. This was this war of attrition that the, 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 the BBC was fighting um, along with the government to make people go back to work. It was very hard. And uh, a lot of people fell. You know, a lot of people couldn't take it any longer and a lot of people went back to work, unfortunately. Uh, not the majority. But, but some do, some couldn't, just they couldn't deal with it. And, and the people who went back to work um, felt guilty forever after, you know. It, and it was, it was very, very difficult. And of course, there were even families where you had um, both working miners, scabs and strikers in the same family, and that caused I enormous splits, you know. And I think that the people who were proud were the strikers, you know. They were the people who fought. They didn't win, they, they lost the battle, they lost the war, um, but they, they came out with pride. Yeah, there's a picture of me here, yes, a, the, the picture of the artist as a young lad, being kissed by one of the women. I think that's, that was at Bern Oldswick. I think it was a solidarity march for the garment workers in Lancashire. And it was just part of, the, of what happened um, out of the marvellous solidarity that the um, miners' wives and the miners felt. And they went and supported other strikes and other struggles in the same way they had been supported. This, this picture here, um, I, shot, I gave it to him and he, he looked at it and he said, I'll stick that on the garden gate and that will keep the dogs away. And I mean, I stayed, stayed friends with many of those people um, until now. I mean, some of them are still my very best friends, um, even though we don't see each other very much. I've had exhibitions in London um, where, you know, people who were part of the Lee Hall Hanging on by your fingernails exhibition have come and, and seen exhibitions that I've done, let's say, about the Roma. When I was uh, 50, one of them sent me a miner's lamp. So that was very nice. You know, you never forget because we were all there in it together. You know, it was, um, it was a very, very strong experience. I went back for the 25th anniversary of the strike. I mean, my aim had been, and it may still be, to do something more about the strike. Um, I wanted to do Lee Hall Revisited, I wanted to video people, I wanted to get people's point of view, I wanted to make a, an exhibition where we were photographing them before and now and, and, and they were sort of interested in doing that and, and, it, and it did rekindle some of the feelings that we had when we were working collectively together. I had great difficulty getting funds from that and I had great difficulty getting interest from any major local gallery in the area um, of Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Staffordshire to actually put on a show and, and, f and I had difficulty finding any support from the labour movement and actually and unfortunately I didn't, I didn't carry it on. I mean there's still the possibility of doing something but um, I didn't do it. Um, and, and what can you do? And the, the 30th anniversary has just gone, or is just in the middle of. Um, so again, you know, this, this um, it, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, if I want to do it now, I have to do it by myself. Um, there doesn't seem to be the support from anywhere to do it. And You know, at the time when the strike was going on, it was really the time to do it, you know, and, and I would never have, I would never wish that I never did it because it was a fantastic thing to do and it was part of solidarity and everything else. But now, you know, to do a revisit is harder because people aren't together anymore. The miners were, the miners' communities were full of solidarity and, and the miners' communities were full of solidarity, not only in times of strike, but in times of working in the mines, because the miners had to look after each other. So there was an extraordinary feeling of collectivity within the miners. Um, and that's something that has been lost. And um, 
so you know it, it for me to come back and do that again it just didn't seem appropriate well we'll see maybe another time I, I'm doing lots of other revisits to other projects <laughs>